Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this lecture, we're going to be discussing the extrinsic pathway as it pertains to apoptosis. We have already discussed apoptosis and the intrinsic pathway, and I highly recommend you check those videos out. So today, we're going to be discussing the intro, sorry, the uh, extrinsic pathway, and I highly recommend you watch all three of these videos to get a good understanding of how cellular apoptosis goes down, especially in terms of the pathologic processes that can happen. We're going to be discussing the extrinsic pathway by first doing a quick overview and review of apoptosis. So apoptosis is essentially cellular suicide, which is reliant on ATP, and it is programmed genetically. So this is also known as programmed cell death. And because you are dealing with genetic factors and you are dealing with activation of genes and proteins, you need ATP. Very straightforward. This is happening intrinsically. Now, this can be induced by the cell itself when we talk about intrinsic apoptosis, and it can be induced by another cell, which is extrinsic, which we're going to be discussing today. All right. So the other thing you need to know is that this process can involve a small group of cells or a single cell. This is not at the tissue level because at the tissue level, you are going to see a different process, which is called cellular necrosis. We've already discussed this as well. Now, the main thing you need to know, the main examples you need to remember are the endometrial lining that sheds during menses. That is a form of intrinsic apoptosis. The CD8 positive killer T cells, uh, they can kill off cells through extrinsic uh, cell death or extrinsic apoptosis, and then also embryogenesis. A lot of people forget that embryogenesis involves apoptosis, especially intrinsic apoptosis. So when it comes to apoptosis, you need to remember that this function or this, uh, this pathway requires ATP, which we've already said, but it also requires functioning caspase enzymes. This is very important because caspases are a key mediator protein or enzyme for apoptosis. They play a role in degrading the cytoskeleton, and they also help to degrade the DNA by activating endonucleases. When they activate these endonucleases, these endonucleases would degrade the DNA by cutting at the internucleosomal regions, a word that a lot of people forget and fall asleep on, but is very important because, and listen carefully, the reason why this is important is because when you go through apoptosis and you activate these endonucleases and they cut at the internucleosomal regions, you are going to get segments of DNA that are multiples of 180 base pairs. And this is a very sensitive, very sensitive indicator of apoptosis, very high yield high yield concept you need to know because if you ever get questioned on this, if you ever get it on a test where they give you a 180 base pair finding of uh, DNA segments, you know the cell went through apoptosis. Remember that. Now, unlike necrosis, the cell membrane will remain intact in this process and you will not get inflammation. Because the cell membrane is intact, the intracellular components will not leak into the extracellular space, and that will not activate the inflammation process or the cascade. Now, when it comes to the, uh, the intrinsic uh, uh, pathway, we've discussed that in detail, but today, the extrinsic pathway, you need to know this very well because you need to know about the proteins and the ligand receptors and the ligands that have to do with killing a cell. This is very important important because you will be tested on this, okay? So the extrinsic pathway goes down in essentially two main pathways that you need to know. So there are two sub pathways of the extrinsic pathway. It gets a little confusing, so I highly recommend you take some time with this video and learn it and understand it. Well, the first pathway is going to be the ligand receptor interactions, okay? Where you have the fast ligand that binds to fast, also known as CD95. Okay, and then you also have the TNF alpha binding to its receptor, and that will also lead to cell death. Okay, so fast ligand is going to bind to CD95, aka fast, and that will lead to cellular death. That essentially will induce apoptosis. When this binding occurs, our body knows it is time to end the cell. Our cells know it is time to die off and they go through apoptosis. But you can also see apoptosis extrinsically happening through immune cells, especially cytotoxic T cells. These T cells will, will release uh, a, a enzyme called perforant and granzyme B. 
when they release these enzymes, when they release these cytotoxic enzymes, these enzymes will actually enter the cells themselves and they will activate caspases. They will also activate the same uh, mechanism you need, the same enzyme you need to degrade the DNA, to activate the endonucleases, to degrade the cytoplasm. Okay, so what do you have? The first one you have is the ligand receptor binding. In this, in this pathway, you are going to see FAST ligand plus CD95, okay? Or you're going to see TNF alpha. Nope, that's the wrong. That's wrong. Looks like this. There you go. TNF alpha binding to its receptor, okay? And this will lead to apoptosis. Or you have the granzyme mediated one how do granzymes get in granzymes get in through perforin perforin will go and perforate the cell membrane it'll essentially create a hole for the granzyme to go in that's why they're called perforins now this is very important so we're going to talk a little bit more about the first pathway because it it plays a huge role in our body it plays a huge role in uh, the development of certain parts of our cells okay so the fast and the fast ligand receptor binding pathway is very important for the thymic medullary negative selection you see when your t cells are forming in your thymus we have to make sure that they are forming properly and the one way we do that is by doing positive and negative selection we want to make sure that our uh, t cells can understand that this is our body and this is not our body that it is a foreign object and this is our own intrinsic normal cells and the way we do that is through the fast and fast ligand binding uh, pathway essentially this will allow us to filter for T-cells that attack our own proteins. So if you get a T-cell that actually binds the fast ligand, okay, it, it, will, it will go through uh, T-cell mediated death. It will kill itself off. It will essentially be destroyed because we don't want a T-cell that recognizes and attacks our own body because that's how you get a lot of immune mediated or autoimmune conditions. Now mutations in the fast, right, in the actual fast uh, molecule, the CD95, can lead to an increased number of circulating self-reacting lymphocytes, aka autoimmune lymphocytes. These lymphocytes will attack our own body. So that's why we need to make sure that, that we don't have this happening in the thymus. We need to make sure that the medulla in the thymus is actually selecting for the positive, the, the proper T cells that are going through the proper stages of maturation. And then finally, this can lead to, uh, this can be actually be caused by failure of the clonal deletion. So if our body or if the thymus is not functioning properly and you don't delete those uh, T cells that are able to recognize our body, they will be released and that can they can cause a lot of damage in the cell. And inflammation is a very damaging process. We think that inflammation is not that, da that dangerous because it kills off any foreign object, any bacteria or virus. But at the same time, there's a lot of collateral damage that is happening to our own cells. We don't want that. And if you have lymphocytes that are are going rampant on their own, you are going to cause a lot of damage. And that's how autoimmune conditions can form. Now, defective FAST and FAST ligand interactions will lead to these autoimmune lymphoproliferative syndromes that we will discuss in upcoming lectures. Now, I hope this was educational. I hope this was helpful for your understanding of the extrinsic pathway. The main things you need to know is that in the extrinsic pathway, you have two sub-pathways. The first one is going to be the FAST ligand uh, and CD95, aka FAST. Uh, binding pathway where the ligand will bind to fast and that will induce cell death. And then the second one is the, the uh, immune cell mediated CD8 positive T cell or the cytotoxic T cell mediated cell death where a T cell will release a substance called perforin. That perforin will perforate the, me the membrane of the cell, allowing for granzyme, specific granzyme called granzyme B, to enter into the cell. And when it enters into the cell, it will activate the caspases and cause cell death to occur. Now, I hope this was helpful. Like I said, if it was, don't forget to subscribe to our channel because your support means a lot to us. It allows us to keep this content free. And if you want to see more content like this, 
go to our website, www.madmedicine.org, where you can find more free content for your educational purposes. Thank you.